Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis from Drone Camps. Check out what I have here today to review for you guys. This is the Shuriken 180 Pro, and what is special about this quad is that not only are you going to get to see an awesome review about this quad, you're also going to get a chance to win this one. I'm giving this one away on my channel on February 14th. All you have to do is make a comment below to get entered into this drawing. There's another video on the channel as well. You can go back on that one and make a comment on that one. So I'll be drawing from both of these videos for the Shuriken 180 Pro. So let's go ahead, open up the box first. I'll show you what comes along with this new model from Hollybro. And then we'll get right into the setup and we'll do a little flying together. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll just show you the different sides of the box real quick. You have the specs on the back. And by the way, this is a 40 channel 5.8 video transmitter on here. And uh, it is five different bands, I believe, switchable on here. Pretty awesome. Also 25 milliwatt and 600 milliwatt switchable. I wish they would have done 200, of course. Hollybro, if you're listening, 200 is pretty much the standard for most people racing. Uh, 25 milliwatt is great, close up, but 600 is too much when you have other guys around to fly. So first thing you see in the box is all the cool stuff you get from Shuriken, uh, from Hollybro. This is the sticker kit. You also have your parts listing here with all the numbers. Your instructions for your E3 charger that comes with it. Your quick start guide, which is super cool. It's actually a pretty decent quick start guide, uh, all in manual with full color pictures in here. So that's pretty nice. And you also have another quick start guide in here, which has some interesting instructions on here for binding up with your Futaba, your FR Sky, uh, Tyrannus. However, I don't have to do that with this model because this is a ready to fly and it has that fly sky controller uh, on there. So this is what you see first. This is the quad itself. It's what you get here in the box. And it looks like a pretty beefy upgrade from the other Shuriken 180, the original Shuriken. And I have one sitting here to the side that I'll show you in comparison in just a minute. Now also in the box you get a set of four bladed props here. And those are four by four by fours. Set those to the side. Your accessories kit here, which is going to include uh, your OSD tuner for your camera. And they've upgraded the camera on this one, by the way. It is also a 600 TVL, but it has a little wider field of view and it's a little nicer camera than what you have before. So you get an extra camera mount in here, which is nice because that is a plastic mount that could break. Now, one thing I really do like about Holly Bros, they have really nice straps. They really give you a substantial strap. Their straps are really nice. You also get some extra these are receiver plugs, so you can plug in. Uh, you can also use a DSMX or a DSM2 receiver on there. So you can spectrum guys, you're not left out in the cold. Set those to the side. And you also get some 3M sticky tape here as well. And they include a 3S battery. And I would recommend flying this quad on 4S. But for beginners, I always tell beginners to start out with a 3S battery and move your way up to 4S. So this is a 3S 1300 and looks like a 25C. So not super high on the C rating, but this will work just fine uh, for our testing purposes. You get some extra zip ties in here as well if you need them. And this is your frequency card. So you've got those five channels on there, IRC, FS, race band. You get band E, B, and band A on there as well. And then eight different channels and it has all your numbers in there. So if you're trying to coordinate uh, with the race coordinator to find out what channel and what number you need to be on, to carry this card with you to the field. I'll go ahead and take the top layer off. Underneath is our transmitter. So this is that, um, which is this one, this FSI6S. So this is free sky. You hold both buttons down at the same time. Make sure all your switches are up, and that's the way you turn this one on. Throttle down. And this should be already bound up with the quad, so we should be good to go there. Uh, also takes four AA batteries in the back, which I already have in there. I'm just going to turn that off. Set that to the side. This is that little charger that you get with it. Does not charge a 4S battery, by the way, so don't try to charge a 4S battery with it. Plug in your balance port right there, and it'll do 1 to 3S on this charger. And it also includes your US style power cable there. And you also get, for hooking up to Betaflight, you get your USB cable in there as well. And 
You also get a digital version, which I assume will include a PDF version of the Quick Start Guide. Now a couple more things that were in the box that were hiding in there uh, were the GoPro stand, and this will go right on top of the camera mount, and it'll work with a GoPro session. So if you have a GoPro session, they include that with it. That's pretty nice. And they also have this little prop wrench. This goes on the motor right here and will hold the motor still so that you can get your props off. Uh, the, the motors actually have three millimeter shafts and some of the different dial props actually went on these really, really tight for some reason. Uh, so you want definitely use one of these. I wouldn't suggest putting a wrench through there because you could damage the coils inside the motor. And you also get a little circular polarized antenna it's for 5.8 which screws right behind here and I'm going to show you some specifics of that. They did change up the design of this frame um, compared to the last one that they released. So now you're looking at the quad from the rear and what we noticed right away is these awesome motors in the back. We have an upgraded power system on this one. I was super excited about this one because this is a lot more beefy than the other Shuriken 180. Now we had on the older Shuriken we had 1806 motors and check this out. See the difference there? We have quite a beefier motor on the 180 Pro. I mean, we're, we're running 2205s on here. 2205, 2700 kVs. The older one had 1806s on there. So quite a difference in the power system. Same size quad, but much upgraded uh, power system. So very, very nice. We're gonna get a lot more punch out of this one. Uh, in my flight test as well, it rolled and snapped on a dime. It is super powerful for this quad size. Um, so I have heard some other people talking about the fact that it is a little bit heavier uh, and as as heavy as some of the 200 size quads out there on the market. It's not gonna fly like something that has a five inch prop on there uh, because these are actually four inch props. I never expect a 180 to fly like a five inch quad. So um, it's not really gonna happen. Um, so five inch quads fly really, really nice, but 180s particularly fly like 180s. Now one thing that I was complaining about before on this design on the old one was the fact that it was kind of hard to get to this uh, VTX to screw in the antenna. So I, what I did was I took a little bit of heat shrink and I put around the end of the antenna here and I did that on the new one for the 180 Pro as well so I didn't have to uh, get my fingers down in there so much to tighten this up. So same thing on this new one uh, but they redesigned the way this is. You see this big hole here? That is kind of a design problem there. So on the new one, what they did was they made it flush. The frame is actually right around the VTX receiver right there itself, the antenna receiver. So we can just screw it on there by hand. And once you get it a little bit tight, go ahead and take a wrench and just barely, barely twist it so that it's nice and snug uh, because it will come loose on you and then you'll have a bad video signal. Now this is the rear of the quad and you're looking at the VTX changer right here. There's a little tiny button down inside there. You can't see it, but if you stick a driver in there and you press that button once and you let go, it'll change the channel. And the channel's on the right hand side here and the band is over here on this side. When I plugged this quad in, it was actually on the F channel, the IRC channel. So I can long press that button and change the band to something else. If I wanna fly on race flight, uh, or, excuse me, on race band, I can do that. So that's not a problem. Uh, like the older Shuriken 180, it does not have a button on this side. It does have a hole there for some reason, but it does not have uh, a button inside there. Now, a little further up the frame, right here we have our VTX switcher and that switches it from 25 milliwatt up to 600 and what I did was I moved these two little dongles up to the furthest point away from uh, the back of the quad and that makes it 600 milliwatt so you get a lot more range uh, your video range out of that setup 25 milliwatt it's not going to be so great out in a big field uh, but if you're flying with other people back that down to 25 so move those two little dongles back now right here we have UART1 as well and we have a bind button Button right here. Also underneath the frame we don't have any holes exposing them but we also have the hookup right here for Spectrum and that would be UART3 there and on the very rear we also have a UART3 for SBUS and PPM right next to that underneath the frame. And by the way, if you're wondering if it works with Fat Shark goggles, yes it does. It actually ships with the default frequency setup for Fat Shark on this quad. So that's pretty cool. You're on channel 5740. So that corresponds to channel one of the Fat Shark goggles. Now, aside from these awesome motors that are included with it, you also get 30 amp ESCs in here that are also replaceable. If you burn one out, 
I've seen other guys do maintenance on theirs and it is possible to change out a new ESC. So that's pretty cool. And they're also set up in Betaflight uh, and BL Heli Suite if you wanna do some programming and update those um, inside the BL Heli Suite. So now you're looking at it from the front view and I love the way this is a low profile design. Everything is encased inside here. So a lot of beginners like this quad because a lot of the components are not exposed on the frame. You don't have ESCs hanging out on the arms and that's actually proven to be pretty durable for most beginners and uh, experienced pilots that go in for a crash. Now it's nice also that it has these little bumpers around the motor. Um, that makes it difficult to get a motor wrench on here to hold the motor still while you're putting the props on but don't over tighten these screws because you will strip these screws they are actually aluminum now also if i flip the quad over here you can see these little bumper plates here on the bottom of the motors and those are really really nice because it protects the pdb down here you also have another mounting plate over top of the center of the quad protecting the pdb here and we have skid plate on the front and we have a skid plate on the rear and what i noticed right away about this design versus the other one, the other Shuriken, the USB port back here on this one kind of sticks out a little bit and it is susceptible to getting hit in crashes. And if that breaks off, you are probably done with that PDB unless you can solder it back on. Uh, but it's very hard to solder these back on. So this one actually has a bumper and a protector around it uh, in, from the vertical position. So that's pretty nice that they redesigned that to protect that USB port back there. It also has a spot for a zip tie if you need to use it. Now you're looking at the older one here with the smaller camera, and this is not the greatest camera in the world. Uh, I wouldn't compare it to anything like a run cam. Um, it's an okay camera. It'll get you by and you'll get out in the field and flying. A lot of people uh, like this model. So that's, that's another reason why I was super excited about this model that they did update the camera. It's a little wider angle lens. So that means that you're gonna get a wider field of view when you're flying this. And a lot of quads, you need a pretty good field of view so that you can see those ghost branches coming at you from the side uh, and you can avoid obstacles while you're flying. Now, this camera also has a nice bit of tilt on the side of it, very much like what we had before. And one thing about this camera versus the other one is the fact that this one has way more clearance here between the camera. You can see that clearance there. It's not quite as uh, bad. We have a little part of the camera sticking out there, but it goes right by it, just above it there, and that is not a problem. It does not hit the camera. Now, on this new design, I had an issue with mine because I actually took it out to test fly it the first time, and it actually hit the side of the camera. The prop is so close that the camera didn't come tightened from the factory, and it actually moved on a horizontal axis like this, and the prop was hitting the camera and kind of damaged the side of the camera there. Um, so that's, that's not a greatest, the greatest design right there. So very, 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 very close to the camera. So make sure you tighten up those screws on the side here. You tighten this screw up inside here. And also make sure that your ring on your camera, holding your camera on this mount is very, very tight uh, before you go out and do your first flight with it because this will rotate and then you'll have big problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the weigh-in and I'll set the quad on there for you. And I'm looking at 366 grams there, right there on the scale. So we'll put the battery on there that came with it. That's with the props on and everything. And with the battery, we're looking at 472 grams total takeoff weight. So now I'll go ahead and take that original Shuriken 180 and put it on the scale. And we're looking at 302 grams there. Uh, also, let's put the antenna and the battery on there as well. We're looking at a total takeoff weight of 419 grams. Not bad for the original one. Now I'm just gonna do a quick overview inside Betaflight for you and show you what version's on here. And just kind of walk you through what they have set up as the factory defaults. It might help you out. And I'll make some suggestions if I need to inside the software. So, uh, so now that we're inside Betaflight, flight we can check the orientation you always want to do that before you go out and do your first flight test so left is left right is right forward is forward and back is back we know we're good there if you need to recalibrate the accelerometer if you take off and it's really wobbling and kind of flying erratically you can go up here and calibrate the accelerometer as long as the quad is on a flat and level surface you use a, a maybe a level or something to make sure your table is level we'll go down to the port section and I'm set up in serial RX here Everything looks good on UART3 for the connection to the RTF uh, remote that it came with. 
Now, we're looking at a few things here on the configuration. I don't see D-Shot here. We don't have D-Shot, but we have one shot 125, and that's cool. Motor stop is off, so that means that when you connect the battery and you flip your arm switch that these props are going to spin up. So if you don't want them to arm, uh, you can do motor stop like that. However, I'm going to leave it off uh, because I like the fact that they do spool up because what that's good for is that actually lets you know that the motors are armed. Um, now when you crash, you're going to have to flip off your motors, your kill switch, throttle kill, to make sure that it doesn't burn up your ESCs because it might be on the ground and still spinning. So uh, something for the intermediate pilots that a lot of them use is actually keeping motor stop off. That way they, uh, they know that the props are armed. Uh, otherwise, I've had other people actually accidentally hit their throttle. Uh, because they didn't know it was armed or forgot that it was armed because the motors weren't spinning to let you know that they are in fact armed. So that's a pretty good uh, tip for you guys. Now it's set up on iBus because we are running that uh, Free Sky transmitter and it has a serial based receiver in there. So you go down to the very bottom here. Got black box turned on. I can actually turn that off because I'm not going to use black box. Now save and reboot. Now we'll go to fail safe and they have it set up to drop which is totally fine. I'm all good with that. I don't want to risk any kind of flyaway uh, with a low throttle value. And let's check that low throttle value. It's set to 1070 here, the minimum throttle value and 2000 maximum. Now we'll go down to PID tuning and I have my super rate set up to 85, 80 and 80. I could change those all to be the same. Sometimes I like a little more y'all. Uh, higher rate on my yaw, but I'm going to leave everything the same here. The PIDs are okay from the factory, but I did notice quite a bit of wobble uh, on these props, so it will need a little bit of PID tuning uh, out in the field. Take a, maybe a, a few hours to do that. Now, everything is set up here with the transmitter receiver. Everything is good there. I have my modes set up, uh, and this is the way they had it set up. They had air mode first on the very top switch, so I wasn't expecting that when I test flew it, and I didn't look inside Betaflight. I just took it outside and flew it. Um, so when I first came off the ground, I thought I was in stabilized mode, but I was actually in an acro uh, on air mode, so be aware of that for this transmitter setup. Your first very top switch is going to be in air mode here. So uh, then you can go down to horizon mode on the next switch down. And let's go down to the very bottom and type in version to find out what version's on this flight board. And it looks like SP Racing 3.0, September 11th, 2016. Not bad, you guys. So let's go ahead and close out beta flight now and disconnect it from the USB and let's go outside and do some flying and I'll show you how it performs outside. guys welcome back from that uh, wild flight test we had with the 180 Pro now I, I did think that it flew a lot better than the original one this is a little more subtle flying with these 1806 motors on here uh, 20 amp ESC's 
and the camera is not quite as good as the new one. So is this a good upgrade? Is this something to get if you're a new pilot? I would definitely say yes because this review would not be complete without an honest opinion about this product. Hollybro makes nice stuff. Uh, I have friends of mine that have started out with the Hollybro original Shuriken 180 and they love it. They absolutely love this one. So if you're thinking about getting this for your first quad, it's awesome because you don't have to build it. All you have to do is turn on the transmitter, go outside and fly it. So you don't really have to go into beta flight and tweak a lot of stuff, which is really, really nice. And since it has beta beta flight on there, it's going to fly a little more locked in and it's going to feel a little more solid out in the field. Now what I would like for new people to do is experiment with different props. Get some different style props, take these quad props off there. They do have a lot of punch, but really you can fly this one with a standard two blade prop on there and it'll save you a little more battery time. You'll actually get a longer flight time with it. Uh, you won't have as much punch, but you don't really need a lot of punch when you're first starting out. And also fly it on that 3S battery because it's going to be way less um, uh, aggressive for you to learning how to fly FPV. So fly it on 3S at first, move up to 4S later. Uh, also experiment with different props. These are a little less aggressive than the bullnose, and I really don't think that uh, the, the quad props are totally necessary on here because really what you're doing folks is you're just eating up your battery life and making your flight time that much shorter so try out some other four inch props the tri props might actually fly a little better uh, and maybe it'll wobble a little bit less now in acro it flew a lot better in acro mode but a lot of you new guys fly the simulator first learn acro on the simulator and then move up to trying it on your race quad outside so now that we're nearing the end of this review, you guys, uh, good luck on getting this quad. It is a great quad to start out with. Um, it has everything you need to hear. It's ready to fly with the transmitter. I'm going to ship it to one of you guys, one of you loyal viewers on my channel. So thanks so much for watching and please do make your comment below because coming up February 14th is when I'm going to announce the winner of the Holly Brochure Week in 180. Guys, I'm Justin Davis. Thanks for hanging out again. I'll see you on the next one.